Life Lessons Procrastination The human brain is not designed for success. The human brain is designed for survival. Survival is about conserving energy. Whereas, success is the opposite of conservation of energy. Success is about expending energy and doing things that are uncomfortable. If you struggle with procrastination, and if you've made bad choices, it doesn't mean you're doomed for failure. So, let's dive into the science of success and how to really achieve anything that you can imagine in your life, including your biggest goals and your biggest dreams. While a lot of people have dreams and big goals, most people never accomplish them. Why is that? The number one enemy that people don't even realize is procrastination. There are three types of procrastination, while most people are only aware of the first type. For example, I have some bills on the counter. I know I should pay them, but I'm tired and I'm exhausted. So rather than paying the bills, I'm going to relax and not pay my bills. This is the first type of procrastination, also known as classic procrastination. The second type of procrastination, which was coined by Rory Vaden, is creative avoidance. Creative avoidance is subconsciously creating things for yourself to do so that you can do those things as a means of feeling productive. A very common example of creative avoidance is randomly accessing email or mindlessly surfing the web without a purpose. Random social media activities without having purpose can also be a bottomless pit of creative avoidance. People often know which tasks are more productive and important to get done to move their business forward. However, there are likely uncomfortable issues to deal with including customer service issues, or you have to confront an underperforming employee. These are examples of things that are significant and valuable to address, but you tend to avoid because it's painful or it's frustrating. So people find creative avoidance with other less significant and less important busy work and distractions. Oftentimes our mind and body play tricks on us. As humans, we blow up the complexity and effort and we make an issue way worse in our mind than it actually is. Additionally, the brain loves to complete things. Our brains get a hit of dopamine, which is a chemical response that makes you feel pleasure when you complete a task. When we check things off, like when we delete an email or complete a task on an arbitrary list, our brains release dopamine, making us feel good. We think we are accomplishing things, but in reality, what we're doing is we're allowing ourselves to engage in the trivial, in the absence of clear intention. We become strangely loyal and addicted to trivial acts because the brain is rewarding us. Euroscientists have documented the extent of how addictive people have become to notifications, emails, social media posts, in the same way humans are addicted to substances such as alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. On the other hand, when we observe ultra-performers, the people across many disciplines and professions that are considered the top of their game. They do things differently. They realize that success and greatness is not related to the volume of tasks that you complete, but rather the significance of the task. The ultra performers are able to get themselves to do the things they know they should be doing, even when they don't feel like doing them. We live in a world with escalator mentality where it is easier to gravitate towards the path of least resistance towards what is convenient, towards what is comfortable. Yet, the truth of success in any endeavor, in any industry is the same story. It is discipline to do what is uncomfortable and not what is convenient. Discipline is the antidote to procrastinations. Understanding that the enemy, procrastination, is always there. The third type of procrastination is called priority dilution. Priority dilution is the chronic overachiever's form of procrastination. It is when you allow your attention to shift to less significant, but perhaps more urgent tasks. It is not being lazy, but rather about not setting focus and boundaries around the highest priority, which results in leaving the office or arriving at the end of your day with your most significant priorities incomplete. There you have it, the three types of procrastination. Classic procrastination, putting off what you need to get done now, till later. Creative avoidance, doing feel-good tasks for the dopamine hit, and staying busy and priority dilution, which is allowing urgent items to interfere with tasks of highest significance. Charles Hummel wrote an essay called The Tyranny of the Urgent, which explains that the more successful you become, the more you take on leadership, the more people are vying for your attention. Left unchecked, your focus on your most significant tasks is at risk for priority dilution. To help increase focus, Greg McEwan, the author on essentialism, recommends becoming disciplined in the pursuit of less. 
not trying to do everything, but rather on less things of greater significance. This raises the lesson that can be learned through a comparison of behavior between cows and buffaloes by studying the way that these two creatures respond to storms. When storms travel, they almost always start up in the west. Then the storm rolls out towards the east. Cows can sense that a storm is coming from this direction and will turn and face in the opposite direction to run away from the storm. The problem with this behavior is the storm catches up with cows, and without knowing any better, the cows continue to try to outrun the storm and get trapped by the barriers such as fences and get stuck having to endure a lengthy storm. By trying to outrun a storm, cows are actually making it worse. Here's the thing, so often, humans do the exact same thing. Humans often try to avoid inevitable challenges that come along with the difficult circumstances that our very own choices have led us to be in. Whether we are overweight and avoiding taking a walk, refuse to put down our forks, or cringe at the notion of skipping a meal, or ignoring mounting debt and failing to pay minimums and curb spending money frivolously, People who are struggling in their marriage are often avoiding the difficult, but meaningful conversations that need to be had if there's any hope of reconciling that relationship. The key insight that the ultra performers have had, that most of us have not realized, is ultra performers understand that problems that are procrastinated on are only amplified. The disciplined pursuit of pain now for greater reward later versus the pursuit of ease for realizing an extended period of pain later. Problems procrastinated on are most often amplified. We think of it as a sacrifice to be enduring pain, but the truth is we always experience pain. Issues procrastinated on are amplified, so waiting always makes it worse. Now for what buffalo do, this is very unique for the animal kingdom. As the storm rolls towards the buffalo, the buffalo turn towards the storm, then they charge directly into the storm. By running at the storm, they run straight through, which actually minimizes the amount of pain, time and frustration they experience from that storm. Buffalo charging the storm is a great metaphor for humans, because all of us are dealing with different storms in life. We have relationship struggles and health battles, and we're trying to launch a business, and we got young families and all these different stressors. It is all overwhelming. While we don't get a choice about whether or not we encounter storms, we do have choice in how we respond to those storms. More specifically, when we respond to those storms, in our natural human default mode to run away from the storm, we fail to understand that it actually makes it worse. Having discipline brings us to the paradox principle of sacrifice which is, easy short-term choices lead to difficult long-term consequences, while difficult short-term choices lead to easy long-term consequence. So there you have it, a life lesson on procrastination. Let us know what you liked about these life lessons on procrastination in the comments section below. Thank you.